compiling shade has optimized performance. Still, for only three out of four. This is so slow. Stuff it. Tell you what, sick of online gaming? Just play some NES on your PS3 hen. Can't go wrong. That sounds well and good, but what does it mean? It means that we're gonna jailbreak this PS3. Jailbreaking allows you to install mods, cheats, third-party applications like the PlayStation 3 Homebrew Enabler, or HEN for short, allowing us to run games and backups that don't normally work on a PlayStation 3. And because this is an old model PlayStation, we can go even further and install a custom firmware that includes a Homebrew Enabler and the Cobra toolset, plus more. But keep in mind, jailbreaking a PlayStation 3 is against Sony's terms and conditions. So to go online while the jailbreak is active, we need to run some workarounds to help prevent being permanently banned. Let's get started. I've linked all the needed software in the description below. Make sure your USB is formatted to FAT32. You can see how in episode one, we're gonna install a new firmware. This time though, we're gonna install the hybrid firmware so that we can further exploit the PlayStation down the line. So go into your PlayStation system update via storage media. Make sure you do it two times. You need to do this twice. You'll find out why later in this video. So next we need to run a hosted tool set. Sometimes this is online, but often it gets taken down. So it's easier to make our own web server to run our hosted tool set. So now we need to install XAMP and enable the Apache server. So we need to go into our htdocs folder and replace the files with our web server. So now we can start the Apache server, find our IP address, go into a web browser to make sure that the flash writer is working. So we need to go into our internet browser on our PlayStation. I'm gonna set my home page to use a blank page. Then I'm gonna clear all the cookies, all the cache and all the authentication information. And then I'm gonna to browse to my Apache server using the IP address of the computer the server's on. We're gonna install our own program into the PlayStation's flash memory. And there's two types, older consoles like this, we need to use NOR. If you have a FAT model ending with A or G, then you need to use NAND. So NOR and NAND are types of logic gates. So it's basically the way the memory is flashed. So N stands for not and AND. So not this and not that. And NOR stands for not and OR. So not this or not that. So the first thing we're gonna do is run the check. Then we're gonna dump our NOR flash memory. That way we can put it onto a USB and check it. So we use the PS3 checker file and the drag drop dot batch file. Then you just need to drag and drop your flash dot dump bin file over onto the batch file. Make sure there's no dangers. Scroll all the way to the top and the ROS0 and 1 are matching. So this is why you needed to install the hybrid firmware two times. If these aren't matching, then you need to go back and reinstall again. Now we can patch our NOR. And finally, we can restart and install our custom firmware, our CFW PS3 ROM. And now we're into our custom firmware. Look at this, it's beautiful. We have Cobra tool sets, we can adjust the fan speeds, we can play with the lights, we can play with the beeping, we can do a lot more than we could before. And the best part, we can install custom software packages. This just in. Today, White Hat community hackers have released retro consoles from restrictions to root directory write access, making hardware owners the super user administrators. This makes the console capable of running custom modified software and much, much more. Let's start with Multiman. Make sure you drag and drop your Multiman copy onto your FAT32 USB drive. Go into the game, go into your package manager, go into install package files and standard install and run Multiman. And now we have the Multiman cross media bar. Multiman's great. We can use this to back up our games and insert them like they were the CD. So if you insert a PlayStation 3 game and press triangle, you can have the copy option. And remove the disc and play the game. Oh yeah. Just be wary, don't do that online. Only play offline games. I'll show you later how you can get online. See if we can do the same thing with a PlayStation 2 game. Triangle to get the options. Create an ISO. 
PlayStation 1 and PlayStation 2 games can now be played as well, and Multiman can create images, but it doesn't always work. I prefer to use a computer to burn the game to an ISO image and then use the USB to copy it over. We'll use a FTP server. Download the FileZilla client. Because now Multiman has an FTP server, we can actually drag our files from a computer across the network. Go into Multiman, go into settings, and FTP enable. That doesn't mean what you think it means. That means file transfer protocol. So make sure your PlayStation's online with a network connection and make note of your IP address. Okay, so maybe you have a lot of games. Now we can jump into FileZilla, chuck that host IP of the PlayStation in, and we can browse its file system. Jump into its hard drive zero, drag and drop all your game ROMs where you want them so that you'll understand where they are on your PlayStation. So once you've got your PlayStation 2 or PlayStation 1 ISOs onto the system, you need to set up memory cards. This way you can save your PlayStation 1 and PlayStation 2 games. If you're like me, you might want to install Mana Gun to run your PlayStation 1 and PlayStation 2 game. I find it has a much nicer user interface than Multiman and a better file manager as well. Put it the Sprinter Cell, X to mount it. Now the PlayStation 2 format disc is loaded into the PlayStation. We can now play Sprinter Cell. Oh, it looks pretty good for PlayStation 2. Right, Gotta love HDMI, don't ya? I want to be able to play my broken old consoles and old games on this system. So let's install RetroArch. It's the same process as Multiman. Install the package files, standard install. Now that we have RetroArch, you need to make copies of your games or get copies of your games from a ROM archive. And then once they're on the hard drive of the PlayStation, we can go into RetroArch, load in the core, Quick NES, that's what we want. Okay, so now we load content, go to our hard drive, and go to NES, Super Mario Bros. And we've got Quick NES loaded. Oh, look at this. Oh, it looks so good in HD. Wow. Oh, exciting. I wonder what the buttons are. So once we're in the game, if you need to get to your menu, all you need to do is turn your sticks in and give them a click. Okay, let's talk about online gaming. If you want to play online and not get banned, don't run any homebrews. Use the game disc. Do it the old school way. And we're going to want to install the Webman package. And we're going to start the games from Webman off the actual CD. So now we need to delete our syscalls and history. We do this by pulling R2 and pressing triangle. History files deleted. And if you want to re-enable syscalls, you just reboot. That simple. And now we can log into the PSN network. And just like that, we can play online. But remember, it's not guaranteed that you won't get banned. But judging by how many people are hacking on this old system, I'm just going to risk it to get the biscuit. Thanks for watching, everyone. Have a merry hackmas. Please like and sub. See you all next time.